Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm here just to do a quick update on the hair and the wig I was sent by Clayu Hair. Um, if you remember, um, a couple of weeks ago I did a video on how I coloured this hair and um, I spoke a little bit about it. It's been some time since I've had the wig now so I can give you a little bit more of an insight onto, into what the hair is like. Um, so. I am experiencing a little bit of shedding and a bit of tangling with this hair. Might have been because I coloured it, I'm not sure. It might just be the quality of the hair, I'm also not sure. Um, but I really like the fact that the hair was able to take the colour well, as you can see. Like the brown has come out a bit more, a lot more actually, since from when I last did it. Um, it straightens really well as well, which I think is an added bonus. I like hair that is pretty low maintenance, that I don't have to do too much to, to get it looking right. The wig is actually quite big for me. I've got a really, really small head compared to the average person. So yeah, um, it's really big. But if you've got a normal size head, then this wig will fit really snugly for you. But other than that, like, I'm, I'm pleased, you know. Like, it's a decent wig company. I'll leave everything in the description bar below for you to check out Clyde Your Hair and order yourself a bomb low maintenance wig like I have. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone is doing well out there and I hope you've had a great week. So today i think i would i think i know i know i want to do a video today um that's more teach based more education based i don't want to start doing a lot more of these videos considering the fact i would like to encourage more people to become teachers but at the same time as well as encouraging you guys to become teachers i think it would also be helpful if we have some help videos as well um i feel like i was privileged enough to be on a training course that was very thorough um but i do speak to other teachers who didn't have quite as a thorough um, process as i did so if i could come on here share some bits and pieces that can help us be stronger teachers and help the gen next generation then why the heck not so today i am going to be doing a video on managing behavior because i teach in inner city london and behavior can be a bit crazy sometimes and behavior can be a bit mad <laughs> sometimes so i'm just going to share with you a few of the things that have really helped me manage behavior in my classroom to turn it around from being a classroom where we are solely focusing on getting them to exhibit positive behaviors and not spending any time on learning we could turn all of that around so that now you have greater time attributed to learning rather than sanctioning yeah so if you are interested in this video please stay tuned don't forget to like and subscribe for this video please um it will tell me whether you guys would like to see more of this content um and send it to all your teacher friends if you have any friends that are teachers please send them this video um it is never too late for us to refresh our skills so that we can be better practitioners okay so first things first before you can even think about regulating behavior in your classroom you need to make sure that you have great relationships with your students i feel like this is the most important piece of information that any teacher can have people aren't going to want to behave for you if they don't know you if they don't feel like you feel like they, they are important they're not going to listen to you they're not going to do anything that you ask them to do so of course having great relationships with them is where we start from and not only great relationships within the classroom but you want to be thinking about creating relationships outside of the classroom as well not outside of school because we don't do that we we abide by the law and we stay within the parameters of the law so when i say outside the classroom i mean around the hallways and the playground are you taking some time i know out of your busy day out of your busy teaching day to i don't know stand in the playground for five minutes and just have a general conversation with the children outside of oh what did you think about stevenson's use of duality in dr jekyll and mr hyde think speak to them about other things their kids they're interesting people when you actually start to ask them questions about their lives you actually start to realize that they do open up to you and you know you you get to find out more about them as people luckily i am a former tutor so i've been able to get to know my students in a very intimate manner because of course like i see them every morning and we get to talk about lots of different things and lots of different issues outside of just education so i have a great relationship with them i also have a great relationship with all the other kids i teach they come to my classroom at lunchtime they come to my classroom during break time when i'm meant to be having me time they're telling me no this is not you time this, this is me and you time we're gonna sit and talk so yeah that has really helped me um to get the students to a of course listen to what they need to listen to which is instructions within the classroom but b it's allowed me to 
cool see them as human beings and make them feel comfortable within my classroom so that they know okay this is more than just education if i genuinely have an issue i can go to speak to miss about it and i think that's the great part it's not just about behavior when you have great relationships with them you get to actually and be in a position where they they get to trust you secondly when you're thinking about great relationships as well this extends past students and it extends to their parents and their carers too are you making the effort to call home not just for negative behavior but are you calling home for positive behavior as well because i who i learned the hard way there are some students that i only used to call home when they were doing bad things and you could hear the tone of their mother or father or carer when you say to them listen i'm calling today because your child did xyz it, it's never nice to pick up the phone from a school teacher and only be hearing about the negative things that your your child is doing you, you tell your child off they're gonna go to school and be like well miss you called my mum so if you think in this lesson i'm gonna be respectful and listen to you you got another thing coming i think it's about having the, the sandwich you start off with something nice maybe you know um today jerome he wrote an excellent answer to question number three that i had in my class however jerome was very distracting in my class okay he he was distracted by everyone he went ahead to distract people and then you end off with something nice the bread but i know jerome has it within him to be an awesome student and i really have high hopes for him but we can't get to where he needs to get to unless he you know he sorts out the behaviors in my classroom that is the way of course <laughs> you relay negative information i'm not trying to always hear bad things about my child it's human nature that your child it almost becomes a personal attack on you because your child is an extension of you so think about how you're relaying information home think about are you relaying information often enough for you to have those positive relationships or create those great relationships if you're not calling home enough or you're not making contact with home enough who's going to help you when you're having a hard time with the children it's of course the parents so if you're not using that tool to help you get the um the behaviors that you would like to see in your classroom try calling home more often okay so the second thing that you want to be thinking about when you want to create those positive behaviors in your classroom is routine okay what kind of routines have you set out in your classroom what kind of routines are the students aware of what have you put in place to say okay this is the culture of my classroom and this is how we do things in my room i don't care what you do in maths i don't care what you do in science but when you're here in english in my class or whatever subject you teach these are the things we abide by these are the routines that we should be following these are this is the culture of my classroom full stop so for me I know that they they won't know what my routines are of course because they're not psychic so that of course the first thing you want to do is let them know about your expectations this these expectations the beautiful part about these expectations you can bring them in at any time it could be at the beginning of the year it could be right after a half term when they most need it because they've gone on holiday and they seem to always forget about what you expect from them as students you can bring it back in after you've had a really terrible lesson with them just to remind them hold on last lesson it wasn't great and this is what i expect from you so letting them um know your expectations and making them aware of what you expect from them as students so that they can achieve your expectations for positive behavior is important be crystal clear about those ex expectations let them know if you do xyz this is what it could lead to if you do not do xyz this is what it will lead to this is what i expect this is what i don't expect and for me personally at the beginning of the year when i let my students know about my expectations i made them sign a contract yeah i did that i made them sign a contract of, of all my expectations and i made them glue it at the back of their books so whenever they broke one of my laws open your book what is at the back of your book what did you sign but you told me that you would adhere to my expectations and here you are not adhering to my expectations so i like that because it gives them um the opportunity to be accountable for themselves it gives them the opportunity to um be what's the word it, it gives them the opportunity to have autonomy thank you that's the word i was looking for to have autonomy over their behavior and they can actually look at themselves and be like okay well you know what i'm responsible for me and i did sign this contract and i did something wrong so you know what it's on me to make it better so yes um make them hyper aware of your expectations let them know that these are the routines that we're going to set out in my classroom and that's on that and if you feel like they are not doing their best in adhering or meeting your expectations or um 
co-signing with your routine then you make them practice it i hated it at first when i would bring my kids in from the playground to the classroom and they're coming into my classroom noisily they're coming into my classroom with their jackets on they're coming into the classroom talking with their friends no we don't do that because that's not the attitude i want for learning in my classroom this is not the atmosphere i want to create for learning in my classroom so i need every one of y'all to stand up go stand outside and we're going to do this again until we get it right and you know what they begin to realize when it's cold outside when it's raining outside i don't want to have to do this 50 times so you know what i am just going to be quiet get to my seat sit down do what mrs asked me to do and i feel like it like i said i feel like it just works wonders you're letting them know that i'm not tolerating anything below what i expect and i expect for you to do x y z in this manner and until it's done we're just going to keep practicing because that is the routine for my classroom and i need you to respect that and last but not least, this is my favourite part, I love to reinforce positive behaviours. In order for positive behaviours to become the norm in my classroom, I make sure I only point out the positive behaviours that I see. I've spent so much time at the beginning of my teaching career in my... Um, I'm still at the beginning of my teaching career, ignore me. <laughs> I spent a lot of time in my PGCE year actually looking at students and when they were doing bad things, only focusing all of my attention on that. Oh, the student is doing this and I'm not acknowledging that maybe the person next to him is doing something, him or her, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, they're being a positive role model. So, I've, you know, I've been told by other teachers, just flip it on its head. Just to give no energy whatsoever to negative behaviours unless of course it's to the detriment of the learning in the class and of course you give the, the appropriate sanctions but if someone's doing something positively we're going to draw attention to that person oh well done Kalani well done for what you're doing you point out what they're doing you you give them the praise that they need because then of course when you a certain somebody is always getting praise in class and you see that Timothy sees that he's never getting any praise he might start to buckle up and be like okay I'm going to see what Kalani was doing and I could see that Kalani's always been praised by Miss. Kalani's always getting certificates, she's always getting shout out of the week. I want to be that too. So whatever Kalani's doing in terms of positive behaviours, I'm gonna adopt that for myself. It's peer pressure at its finest, okay? And you make sure that you reward them accordingly because kids love prizes. I love prizes and I'm an adult. I love prizes. So I like to do individual things in my classroom rather than just sticking to um, our reward systems at school. I have a whole display that are that is dedicated to my megastars. So I have a megastar for each year group. I change it every term and I bring in like big boxes of sweets for that individual student. And everyone sees, everyone's like, <sighs> Miss, I need to be there next time. Well, then you need to work hard to get there. So I think that's the most important part more than anything. Well, having the respect for them, of course, but rewarding them when they are showing positive behaviours because they are children and people like to be told, great, well done, you're doing a good job. It's human nature, you want to be told that. So make sure you have things for them to celebrate their good behaviours, whether it's call home, whether it's a shout out of the week, maybe you create your own systems in your classroom, because like I said, you know, in your classroom you create your own routines. It do what it do, Shari. So I hope um, you were able to take some tips from this video and I hope you actually try them out in the classroom. Any of you um, teachers out there, wow. <laughs> if you did try it, let me know how it look, um, how it works out in the comments section below. I hope this was useful for you and it was helpful for thinking about how you can actually encourage positive behaviors in your classroom, but also, you know, do so in a manner that doesn't feel oh my god i need to make a new seating plan i need to scrap everything start again or you you feeling like oh it's the middle of the year these kids aren't going to take me seriously ever again until maybe next september i don't want you to feel like that we all have bad lessons we all have bad weeks and it's your classroom essentially it's your lesson you are the leader in that room and you get to dictate what behaviors you do want to see and you get to say who actually gets to stay in your classroom or, or not depending on how they behave so like i said Hope this video helped. I will see you next time for another video. And um, for this hair, I will leave the links in the description bar below so you guys can check them out as well. So I will see you later. Bye.